music and live video seem like a perfect match, but for many streaming platforms, it's been difficult to make it work smoothly. For StreamYard in particular, it's been a gradual progression. I did a tutorial video on playing background music with no additional equipment and then a follow-up of the same name on the StreamYard channel. I'm gonna leave links to both of those videos in the description. Background music in StreamYard has come a long way. We now have the option to upload our own background music but still need to be mindful of copyrights. It's almost like a bad word. Let's look at how best to incorporate background music into your StreamYard live show. I'm Kirk Nugent, your live video coach, and on this channel, I give you the step-by-step -step guides and practical tutorials for the do-it-yourself video creator that learns visually. And today we're looking at uploading your own background music in StreamYard. So here we are on my desktop, looking at StreamYard. We're already in the studio, logged in. And if you look on the, uh, the left, right side of the screen where all the controls are, um, it, we're in the brand tab. So not in comments, not in banners, not in uh, private chat. We're in the brand tab. And in the brand tab, I've got a number of the sections already collapsed, brand, theme, logo, so that we don't have to see those. Uh, overlay is here because we're going to get into some of that in just a second. Video clips are here. We're also going to utilize that just to give you an example. But down below that, you also have background, which is collapsed. And the last section is background music. And you can see that here. One of the things that is is new with background is, is the fact that we do have background music, right? This, this is actually a fairly new feature that StreamYard has rolled out, but um, what is literally just a few weeks old is this section right here at the bottom. The one that I'm highlighting with my mouse, I'm also even zooming in on it for you guys to be able to see that clearly add music and you may not even have seen that maybe yours is collapsed right now and all you can see is there's a new icon here and that usually denotes something right so but yeah you, you can expand that go all the way to the very bottom and you have add music now yours is probably going to have a bunch of stock music in there that i have actually deleted so you can delete the stock music that it, the the system comes with, um, and when you create a new brand, you can have that new that stock music back. But I don't want that music in my in my brand here. So the stuff that is here I, are music that I've uploaded. And so let's just walk through that process of actually uploading a song. So I'm gonna click the plus sign here and click on Add Music. And I'm gonna to go to my music folder and we're just going to do, uh, let's do the Kirk track. <laughs> it's an MP3 file. We can upload that. While it's uploading, I'm gonna click the plus sign again so that you can kind of see this page a little bit more. And you, you're gonna see here, and this is, this is what we're gonna spend some time talking about. Only upload music you have you have made or are authorized to use and you have this learn more it's probably worth your time to click that because they do go through uh several different things that you can um, do with background music here so stream your background music that's the article that seems like it's uh pointing to the wrong place i think they really should be pointing you to uh some of the places that you can go to to get free or royalty free or copyright free music I'll link to some of those in the description of the video as well. Uh, if we hover our mouse over the question mark here, it says recommended file type and size. So 30 meg is a limit. And then file type are all of those that you see there. M MP3 is there, Wave is there. Those are probably the two most common, but you have um, several others that are there as well. M4A is another one that I, I have seen before, even AAC, but some of the others are not as common, but they do have them there. In case your file format is one of those, you can tell by hovering your mouse over this question mark. Then you would just simply click the add music icon find your music on your computer and hit upload. Mine should have uploaded by now and you can see it is here and it's ready to go. So now that we have this track uploaded, let's take a listen, right? So we can hit the play icon here and it will start playing, right? So it's highlighted when it's playing. It doesn't give you an indicator of how long the song is or anything like that. So it is playing and we can adjust the volume. So I'm going to pull that down just a little bit so that it is in the background. It is intended to be background music. After all, you do also have the option here 
to adjust the volume along with looping the track. You can also loop the track right here. So I have that loop icon checked. So this, this track will just keep playing like this in the background, which is pretty cool. Let's, and then you do the same thing to be able to turn that off. Um, as mentioned before, you can delete some of the music tracks by simply going here. You can just select delete and it deletes the music track. Um, in addition to that, you can rearrange music tracks. So this is uh, this is actually a sound effect, and that, I'm going to touch on that in just a second, but you can rearrange the order of them. If you want some to be up at the top or others to be at the bottom, you can rearrange them here in the system, which is pretty good. Um, lastly, you can upload sound effects. And so uh, I, this is really cool here's a doorbell one i'm going to upload that we click on that and it uploads and while it's processing it's there and i can just click that and it plays now here's something that you will want to know um let's pull that down we're going to press play on this track okay so that track is now playing music um if i go to play an additional track it does not play both at the same time and when you're playing sound effects, you do want to make sure you uncheck the loop icon, right? The loop icon is here, and it is great for music. But if you are going to use this to play sound effects, which you can, and I don't see why you wouldn't, you are going to want to make sure you uncheck the loop icon because that may get you into some trouble. Um, and, and just kind of, you know, follow your workflow there. Uh, I think it's really cool that we do have the ability to play some of these kinds of things uh, because people have been asking for them for such a long time. Here's a clapping sound effect. Uh, if you're recording your podcast or you're doing your live show, you want to bring somebody on stage with applause. This could be a really cool one, but you do want to make sure that it's not set to loop so that you don't hear that clapping over and over and over again. Uh, so it's a lot of good, really cool things there to look at. Keep in mind, you can only play one music track, background music, whatever you upload into that section at a time, right? Only one at a time. And I, I would definitely, you know, monitor your stream, make sure you're listening to it yourself and adjust the stream accordingly. In fact, here's a little pro tip. If you can, definitely take time to record something before going live, listen back to it to hear what that audio level sounds like in terms of your background music or your sound effects, and then adjust your, your levels accordingly because what we hear in our ears may not be quite what the audience hears um, at the end destinations, right? So keep that in mind as well. Um, one of the things that uh, we can do, of course, I'm gonna throw this up on the screen, and now that I have that up on the screen, I'm gonna just take a moment right here to say, if you haven't checked us out on Amazon Live, you want to go ahead and do that. Um, our latest video was on the power of community and coaching. Both of those are really cool um, offerings that we currently have on kirkarnugent.live slash support. You can get to coaching from there. You can get to support from there. So if we've done anything in our videos that have helped you, would love for you to be able to uh, come and help us out, right? Sow a seed back into what we're doing here as well. Uh, that said... One of the things that you can do is stack and layer some of these things. So here's a great idea, right? So let's say you're starting your live show. You don't necessarily want a countdown clock, but you want to put something up on screen that allows people to know that they're in the right place. The show has started, but you're not quite ready yet. You can put up this flyer um, and then you can play some music in the background. Click the loop icon to make sure that that's playing. Maybe turn it up a little bit since nobody's on screen and then just throw a banner up on screen, right? That that allows them to know, oh, this is live. There's something going on here and we're ready to go. Think about this. A couple of videos back, I actually talked to you guys about an additional um, option that we have in the video section of the brand tab for StreamYard, which is the loop option for videos. This is something that is also fairly new. If you have an animation like this one that I created for a client show, you can utilize this, right? It has no audio. It's just playing and it's going to play over and over and over again because I am looping. You can actually have this here, have that playing 
put up a banner that says, welcome to developing a spiritual money mindset. You know, let us know in the comments where you're watching from. Live show will start soon. So that's playing. Everything is cool here. But now we're stacking functions and features, right? You can actually play. Let's say we're going to play Jazzy Friday, right? So now I've got Jazzy Friday playing in the background. Let's pull that down some. Jazzy Friday playing in the background. I have this animation on screen with the banner on the bottom. And this is not a video, right? Like a countdown. But this is kind of a placeholder that would be really cool. Uh, in my opinion, it's a really professional looking um, holding screen where people would be fine hanging out for a little while while they're waiting for the show to start. Let's stack yet another one. We'll take the music off. Of course, you do have to have the loop checked on the music for that to work. Let's take the video off. And again, you do have to have that checked for it to work as well. And let's play a different one. So here's all the way in. This is another um, a, a, a quick little animation thing that we created for our client. I want to change the banner to reflect all the way in. And then we go back to the brand tab and play yet another track. Let's play this one here. So we have the music playing in the background. We have the animation on screen. We have the ticker running across there. And you know, even as people are, you know, comments are coming in and they're saying where they're watching from, you can bring those comments on screen and it feels like, you know, something is happening. It's not, you know, you don't have a countdown clock unless you can create a, an animated video that does have that countdown clock with no music and then you can play your own music in the system. But what we're talking about is taking some of these features and stacking on top of them different things that we now can do because They've given us some additional functionality in the platform. I hope that that makes sense to all of you guys. There's a, there's a couple of different things that we're doing there to make that happen and make that work. But background music is phenomenal in your live stream. But being able to utilize the loop feature, being able to utilize the ability to upload, upload your own background music, your own music period, your own sound effects, any kind of MP3 file, but then additionally using this loop video feature as well to give you a bit of a holding screen. I think it's pretty awesome that you can do it in that way. Features like this one from StreamYard are awesome, but we must use it responsibly. Here's a critical distinction. Just because you bought the music doesn't mean you have rights to play it in your live show. Even services like Epidemic Sound, you need to add the license to your YouTube channel. And remember, when you're a guest on someone else's show or channel, that they might not have rights to that music either. Background music is a professional touch to any live show, but you need to avoid getting a copyright strike. If you, or like me, have ever received a copyright strike or had your video taken offline due to music, let us know how it happened in the comments. Learn more about StreamYard from these videos.